and now it's time for your Canadian weather roundup. So let's take a live look at the sunny weather out in beautiful British Columbia. Uh, <clears throat> it's a. Uh, <clears throat> Must be something wrong with the live feed. Sure, let's all go to the cabin and leave the intern by herself for the long weekend. Here we go. Here's a lovely taste of the weather in pretty nice Nova Scotia. In Ontario. In Quebec. Uh, in, in Alberta. Oh my god. The universe is being erased. If there's anybody out there, listen to me. You and I, we're the only ones left. If any of you are a, a quantum physicist or, or, or a priest, please contact the studio immediately. Unless I'm the last person in the universe. Sorry. Hello? It's wildfire smoke? All of it? How can it all be the same smoke? Oh, what's that, worst, worst fire season on record? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Only getting worse? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Thanks. And I'm fired. That's all right, I'll always have my super stable career on TikTok. Hey, did you notice a strange sensation in your lungs this summer? Thanks in large part to climate change, we all learned what it feels like to have tiny pieces of the boreal forest floating around in our larynx. And it feels great. <laughs> but hang on, aren't trees supposed to store carbon and save the planet? Before asking a scientist about this, I thought instead I'd listen to my cousin on Facebook who's super into Bitcoin and says, we don't have to worry about climate change because Elon Musk is gonna build a big old vacuum and suck all the carbon and the smoke right out of the atmosphere. So let's pull that up on screen. Oh, but hang on a second. But between trees and technology, the big question is this. Can we keep up our oil burning, tar sands mining, trucks doing donuts in a superstore parking lot lifestyles and still fix climate change? Isn't there a way to just get rid of all this pesky CO2? Hi, I'm Hazel Thayer and this is The Climate Breakdown. Okay. Can you save your squints for after? Simply, simply don't react to the pain in my eyeballs. All right. <clears throat> in 2019, Canada declared a climate emergency and Prime Minister Trudeau himself marched in a climate protest with Greta Thunberg to protest uh, himself, I guess? And later announced his first action as a more climate-friendly PM would be to plant two billion trees to cancel out some of Canada's carbon emissions. Quiet on set? I mean, it's genius. Trees breathe carbon, so what with all this extra carbon in the air, they're probably having a pretty good time. Right? Right. So why not plant some more of them to suck up all that extra carbon that would otherwise heat up in the atmosphere? Folks like Premier Danielle Smith and Den Dragon slash tank shark Kevin O'Leary have said that Canada's trees actually already suck up all the carbon Canada emits, making us technically, technically carbon neutral. But if you remember from several seconds ago, Canada has been experiencing just eyebrow frying record wildfires. Those fires are caused by a number of different factors, but scientists are reporting that all of this extra carbon that's causing climate change is also making these out of control fires worse. Well, scientists are reporting, screaming, same difference. Anyway, those burning trees might irritate your lungs or level a town or two, but they also have just a brain-busting carbon footprint that you are probably too busy coughing to think about. That wildfire smoke actually became Canada's biggest source of carbon emissions in 2021. That's right, those wildfires raging in places that were made hotter and drier by carbon emissions are now making more carbon emissions. Now, I've never seen Inception, but from what men have explained to me about Inception, it's kind of like Inception, except everything's on fire. And on top of that, we even sell these suckers as carbon offsets, meaning that polluters can pay companies to manage and not chop down some of their old growth trees so that those trees continuing to exist can offset their carbon emissions. So kind of like a mafia protection racket, except for instead of your knees, it's some old ass trees. It's some old ass trees. <laughs> 
and some of those offset trees are also, at the time of writing, just super on fire. And uh, reports are coming in now that at least one of them is the tree you paid for to offset your last flight. The fact is that after all the boring climate accounting is done, Canada's forests are not carbon sinks, which reduce our carbon footprint, but carbon emitters, increasing our carbon footprint. And that's been true since, checks notes, 2001? This is mainly because of wildfires, forest mismanagement, and because we just keep cutting them down, which creates sequestration dead zones, also the name of my goth ska metal fusion band. Great joke, me. <laughs> Planting trees is nice, but not cutting them down in the first place is a much better way to capture carbon. Canada's trees, especially our old growth, can offset some of our emissions, but only if we manage them right, treat them real nice, and stop cutting them down. And listen, if Trudeau wants to plant those two billion trees, it's not like it'll be bad for the planet. So go saplings. Or whatever. All kinds of experts agree that planting trees is nowhere near as effective as, you know, just not creating all that carbon by burning fossil fuels in the first place. But that's okay because we still have technology. Technology like carbon dioxide removal or CDR. Can't we just suck all the carbon out of the sky with technology instead of trees? Scientists and engineers across Canada and the world are working their little butts off trying to figure out how to capture carbon and save the planet. But there's just one problem. According to this expert, carbon dioxide removal is not a current climate solution. We need to drastically reduce emissions first, or carbon dioxide removal will be next to useless. So we asked him about it. My name is David Ho. I'm a professor of oceanography at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I am currently working on building this nonprofit to work on verification of ocean-based carbon dioxide removal. Professor Ho's company, Seaworthy, looks at ocean-based carbon removal efforts to see if they, well, work. But despite working to remove carbon from the atmosphere, he says, Carbon dioxide removal is really expensive and really energy intensive. David Ho refers to carbon removal as a sort of time machine, turning back the clock on our carbon emissions. But how well that time machine works depends on how much carbon humanity pollutes. There's a CDR plant in Iceland. They use a direct air capture to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. And they have a goal of 4,000 tons of CO2 per year. And most people don't know what that means. 4,000 tons, it sounds like a lot. We want to go back to an atmosphere of the past. So 4,000 tons, given our current emissions of a little over 40 billion tons of CO2 every year, it's a time machine that takes us back three seconds in one year just three seconds a year. But on the other hand, what if everything worked out perfectly? We switch over to green energy, we electrify everything, we figure out how to harness the power of friendship for energy, and we do all the other stuff that climate scientists are calling for. What if we actually did drastically reduce our emissions by, let's say, 90%? It's really for maybe the last 10%, what we consider the hard to abate sector or the residual emissions. And if we fail, at, at the 10%, we'll, we'll still be mostly okay. But if we fail at that 90%, we are screwed. So we do need the CDR technology because someday future people will probably want to be able to draw down all the extra pollution that we're leaving them. But it's also not an excuse to just keep polluting. In fact, carbon removal really only makes any sense if we also reduce our emissions. Oh, and we asked him about the trees too. I think trees are great. We need more trees, but we need trees for the other benefits, right? For shade, we should have trees so birds can sit in them and crap on us. But we are not going to rely on trees for carbon dioxide removal because th that's just not, it's not permanent enough. So what does this mean? There's no way to remove all of this carbon? Eh, not exactly. Trees, carbon removal, they're not get out of jail free cards like some people would have you believe, but they can all have an impact as a part of a broader decarbonization strategy. They're things we can do at the same time as say, ramping down fossil fuels. The point is, it's kind of like trying to sober up with a cup of coffee while you're still drinking a beer. Let's put the beer down first. 
Thanks for watching The Climate Breakdown. This is the last episode in our first season, and if you want to see a second season, let us know in the comments and subscribe to this channel. Thanks to Dr. David Ho for being on the show. He is very funny on Twitter, or X, and you can follow him at David Ho. Make sure to check out his ocean carbon rating startup, Seaworthy, that's C as in carbon, at seaworthy.org. The Climate Breakdown is a production of The Goose in partnership with The Weather Network. I'm Hazel Thayer. You can follow me at Hazel is online basically everywhere. Peace. And cut. Are we wrapped? Is that it? Yeah, that's the last shot. Oh, thank Christ. <laughs>